Hi. In this how-to video on Syspack Studio Robotics Edition, we will be taking a look at custom mechanics, what they are, how to create them, and how to use ShapeScript to animate them. Syspack Studio Robotics Edition, or SSRE for short, has a 3D visualizer which can be used to define our project's workspace. We can add primitives, CAD data, virtual path sensors, various predefined types of mechanism. It is also possible to load various robots into the scene. While these will fulfill most of our needs, sometimes we may need to define a custom mechanism. Perhaps we wish to use a more complex arrangement, prototype a design, or implement another type of robot. For this, we have the custom mechanics object. Let's start with a simple example by creating an XY slider. First, we will create a new project. Select Application Manager, as this is what will be controlling our 3D visualization. By expanding the Configurations and Setup section, right-clicking on 3D visualization, and navigating through the Add menu to the custom mechanics object and clicking, a new custom mechanics will be added to the project. We can right click on this and rename it to something more descriptive. And by double clicking on this, it'll open the editor. On the right, we have the 3D view of the mechanic, which is empty for now. On the left is the property grid, which we'll dive into in a moment. Below that are the links and mounts, which, like other CAD objects, are used to attach other objects to this one and attach this one to other objects. And finally, at the bottom are the test run controls. These will let us move the parts of the mechanic in order to test if we've set it up correctly. OK, so let's look at the properties and start creating our mechanic. So I've closed some of the windows in order to make some more space on the screen. And let's take a look at these properties. First of all, we have visible, which sets whether this custom mechanic is visible in the 3D visualizer. We can set a collision program, which is a script that will be called if a collision is detected between this custom mechanic and another object. We can set a parent object and an offset from that, and a rotation offset. And these are all fairly standard for most of our objects. In addition, Custom Mechanic has a tool center point, which is determined by one of the parts and an offset from that. And lastly, the movable parts section, which is what we'll start to set up now. So if we click on the plus sign on the left of parts, and we can then choose a step file for our CAD. And here's a filter. You can see we can take STP, step, IGS, or IGES. Let's start by importing our base object. And you'll notice right away this is red because we've got a minus sign in there, which needs to be replaced. So let's just change that to an underscore and click OK. And here's our CAD object. Now you might notice we can't see much of it, and that's because the floor is opaque when you're above it. If I rotate so we're seeing underneath it, you'll see the rest of the object is beneath the Z0 plane. Let's use our control on the left to set an offset for that and bring it back into view. And having experimented with this a little, I can say that the setting minus 100, minus 400, and a Z of 75 will position this object at the origin above the Z plane. So there's our offset. If this was facing the wrong direction, we could also set a rotation in here using Z, Y, Z order angles. Um, however, this is facing front and that works perfectly well for us now. We can also set a collision hole for this part which is 
editable down here. And as you'll see, this is a fairly standard convex hull kind of arrangement. It's possible we'd want to uh, set a more refined convex hull. And we can choose a mode and we can set multiple holes as well. So if I uh, show you that, multiple holes, click update, and you'll see it now pulls in tight around each object. But we don't need that for now, so I'll cancel out of that. Let's import our next part. So we want the Y slider. And again, let's fix the naming of that. And we want to line that up. So let's simply copy and paste. Hit enter and that'll update. You can also click off the controls. And we now have two parts that are lined up with each other. So let's see if we can join these together. We can create joint motions by going to the motion direction and settings. Let's orientate our view so we can see what we're working with a bit more clearly. There we go. And we wish to set the Y sliders movement. Obviously the Y base will not be moving, that'll be fixed at the base, and the Y slider will be moving relative to it. We want linear motion, we can also set rotational and linear and rotational. But for now, we'll work with the linear. We can position that joint. So let's align our view to make that a bit easier. Bring that up to the plane. Scroll that back, which doesn't matter too much because uh, as long as this direction is correct, it will move. But let's line that up for the sake of completion. These large arrows actually determine the direction that we'll be moving in. So for example, at the moment, if I move our slider, you'll see we slide along the track, which is what we would like. But say we were working in a different direction, we could make things slide in another direction. We could also take this and change our directions. So let's revert that change. Select our correct vector, which is along the Z, uh, as indicated here by the red arrow. And I think that looks good for us. So let's accept that. You'll notice now that in the test run section, we have a joint we can move. If we have it enabled and we set a value in here, let's say 20, and then click plus, you might notice nothing happens. That's because the view that actually gets updated is the 3D visualizer, not the 3D view. This is the custom mechanic as created. This is the custom mechanic as it's been tested. So if we click again, you see we're actually moving down the slide and back. However, worth noting that you'll see our current position is zero. And we can go into the negative and we can go off the end of the track. So there's no limiting here um, for the ends. We can set that position back to zero. If this is a rotary joint, we could also perform a rotation. However, because this is defined as a linear joint, no rotation control take effect, just the, uh, the linear slide motion. The third and final part of creating a joint is the uh, joint settings. So now we've got the parts in, we've set their motion, we can set a joint profile here. So 
First of all, we select our base and our slider. And we're going to determine how these two objects are joined together. Initially, it's set to a joint type of fixed, which means they're essentially welded together. The other options are hinge, so that'll be rotating around an axis. Ball joint, which is rotating uh, around two axes. Sliding joint, so that'll be moving along one axis. A rotational joint, so it'll be rotating around an axis again. And parent and child. Now, these are used when we want to create a, uh, a non-powered joint, if you like. But seeing as we're setting these um, as, a, as a mobile joint, so they've got the motion direction settings. What we can actually do is just select parent and child. That means that if the uh, the base is moved, then the uh, the slide will be moved, and the two will remain relative to one another. So that's okay. That we now have one direction of our two direction x y sliding table. So let's start importing some more parts. Next up, we want the uh, we want the X slider. So this is the, uh, the table that's going to move along this X axis. And we'll fix the naming of that. This needs the, uh, the same offsets applied to it to line it up. And you'll see when we do that, it jumps into the right position. Again, we follow the path of creating a motion setting for this. So we now select the X slider. Again, it's a linear motion. We can align this with our object. But you'll notice now that if I move the slider, it slides in the wrong direction. That's because our our motion is this way. Now we can either rotate our coordinate axis or we can simply select the Y axis as the motion of direction. And we now have the appropriate motion. That's OK that again. Come down to our joint settings, select our Y slider and our X slider, and set those as parent and child. And we now have an additional axis down here to control. So let's set our value in there. And now you'll notice that we have both of these enabled. So if I select the, uh, the move in the positive, they will both move in the positive direction at the same time. If we want to only move one of them, we just disable the ones we don't want. And it'll move the axis we do want. Worth noting if nothing happens here, that's possibly because you have no axes selected or you haven't set a movement value. So if these are zero that are enabled, then nothing's going to happen because you're trying to increase the uh, position by zero. So that concludes the first part where we take a look at a simple example. We now have an XY slider. We've got the joints and motion set up for those, and we've tested to make sure that they work correctly. That concludes part one of this how-to guide. In part two, we'll create a more complex custom mechanic and use ShapeScript to animate it.